So on the average, Americans are living in their house over twice as long as they were just a couple of years ago. We're going to talk about the why of that is um, and what does that mean for the market going forward, especially if you're looking to buy a house. Good question. This is Steve, real estate agent, Malone Realty Group, EXP Realty. Hope you were doing well. So we just, thought, we just got a, a report that said that uh, home ownership length of time is on the rise. So let's take a look at in three time periods. Uh, before 2008, the average American bought a home, sold a home, five years. So in their house for five years. Since 2008, or 2008 to 2016, I should say, that time frame has gone to eight years in that time frame. And since 2016, the average has gone to 10 Point six. So we were at five before 2008. Then between 08 and 16, eight since 2016, we're at 10.6. So people are in their houses a whole lot longer than they used to be. So first, why? Well, I think when you look at the at, at that setup, the, the important thing to keep in mind is, you know, what happened real estate wise in 2008? We had the big recession, right? And obviously, you know, we had all the job losses. We had, you know, major economic issues. Uh, one of the bigger ones being new construction just basically came to a halt for a good three, four years, um, you know, on the whole. I mean, yeah, they were building new houses, but I mean, it was just very, very low compared to where you're supposed to be. And you look at the past, you know, and look at, since the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you're supposed to be building a certain number of homes every decade to keep up with population growth, keep up, keep up with people coming in, being born, you know, getting into home ownership age, coming into the country, things like that. So you're supposed to build a certain number of houses. We've built half the number of houses we were supposed to have built since 2008. That, that's a pretty substantial number because you had, you know, very few houses built for like three or four years, then trying to play catch up. And then you had the coronavirus issue, which is really kind of hamstrung a lot of the stuff. So not as many new homes being built. So that's one of the reasons why. I think one of the other reasons why um, that number has gone up is because people have had less reason to move. Um, you know, telework is more uh, common now than it used to be. Uh, so people are staying, you know, at their, or they're staying in their houses a little bit longer because they don't have to be closer to their work. So whether you work downtown or like you live in Gwinnett, but you work in Alpharetta, you know, you don't have to move to be closer to your job. Your job's allowing you to work from home either a little bit more or all the time. You don't have to move for your job. So, or, you know, to be closer to the job. So that's good news. So people are less likely to move because of the job, because the job lets them be wherever they want to be. I think the other thing is, and some of the newer construction that we've seen is the their construction's a little bit bigger you have more rooms uh people are a little more picky about what they bought you know in that time frame you know because if you think that it's 10.6 years on the average so a lot of people who have a house right now you know they bought a house in that 2008 to 2010 range on average let's say so a lot of people are like if we're gonna make the move now let's really get the house that we want to get you know with all the right number of rooms the right yard you know all that stuff very picky about it. They got the house they wanted and they're not moving <laughs> because they got the house they want. They're in the right area, all that stuff. And the other thing is, you know, stuff's not only in the city anymore, you know, as far as like things to do on the weekend or restaurants or stuff like that. I mean, all these areas around in the metro, like in the um, suburbs, I should say, like in, let's say, I'm in Gwinnett. You know, that's where my home base is. So we're talking about like, you, know, you look at Suwannee and Duluth, Buford, Sugar Hill, and then the surrounding areas like uh, you know, Alpharetta and Cumming and, you know, Dawsonville. I mean, all these little cities and little towns have their own thing going on now. You know, they got amphitheaters, they got restaurants, they got all kinds of stuff. So you don't have to move to be close to stuff. The stuff is like built up around you. So there's really no reason to be to move, to be closer to stuff, the stuff's right there. So that has changed too. So there's less of a draw to, to move. So there you go. I think that's why, that's the why that number has gone up. So is that good news? Or what's the good news about it? What's the bad news about it? And what does it mean going forward? The good, the good news about it is if you've been in your house 10.6 years, that means on average, you've owned it since 2011, you made a little bit of money. <laughs> Congratulations. We've all seen prices go up over the last couple of years 
uh, dramatically over the last couple of years, but you know, over that time frame, prices have gone up. So if you sold your house today, you know, unless you've refinanced the house like crazy, uh, you're going to get a substantial check when you sell your house if you were to sell your house today. So that's wonderful news. Um, the the other great news about that is that you know people you know they like where they are they get more invested in their area um, you know that people tend on you know to help to build some of these other cities and they continue to grow and strengthen and you know it just they they grow deeper roots and things like that so I mean I think just on the whole I think that just for the, the sanity of, uh, you know, people's livelihood and health and everything like that. I think, you know, moving's a pain. That's, that's hard to say as a realtor. And my job is to <laughs> talk people into or help people uh, sell or, or buy or whatever. So, you know, it's hard to look at them and say, oh yeah, let's do that. Because I mean, I just moved four years or yeah, four years ago. And yeah, you know, I, you know, we still have nightmares about it because man, that's like stressful, man. Moving's not fun. So, you know, I think that with less moving, you know, there's less of the paying, you know, there, you know, there are fees and there's, there's a cost to moving and not having to pay that as often. So, I mean, those are good news too. So I think, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing that that's happened, but there are some bad sides to it. And obviously the biggest one is we have a dramatic lack of inventory. The dramatic lack of inventory, you know, it is rooted in the fact that we have less construction. Uh, so people don't have anywhere to, to go to next. So if you're selling your house, you have less options to figure out, you know, where am I going to go to next? You know, because of that, they there are people who are on the fence who look and see nothing to go to. And they say, I'm not going to sell my house because I don't know where to go to. So they pull their house and they're not going to go on the market. So that's even less homes on the market. So then there's people who are closer to thinking about selling they're not quite on the fence. They're past the fence. They're getting ready to jump in, but then they look and they're like, wow, there's really no homes on the market. And then they pull back and, and so on and so forth. So it has that cascading effect. You know, if we had more houses go on the market, more people would see more houses on the market. They jump into the market and so on and so forth. So we need to turn the whole machine around and get things going. So that's why I think, you know, I think eventually it, it will come back a little bit, but it's going to take some time to really turn that corner because I think the trend is to see that continue to, to lengthen, you know, as far as, you know, that time period before we actually get into a, a more balanced market. I think it's still going to be a seller's market for a while, but we just don't need it to be the extreme seller's market that we're seeing right now. So that's the bad news. The other bad news is if you've been in your house for 10, 11 years, more than likely you have refinanced your house in that 10 to 11 years, because rates are dramatically lower than they were 10 to 11 years ago. So for that reason, and they've stayed low for a while, for that reason, you know, you're not going to sell your house and buy another house at a dramatically lower rate and get a, a payment that's pretty close to where you are right now and get more house. That was something people were doing back in the 2000s when the rates went from being in like the sevens and sixes down in the fours and fives. It's like you could sell your house, get a new house, that's more expensive, but you're getting a dramatically lower interest rate. So for that reason, you may be paying as much as you were in the mortgage with the last house. So you get more house, same payment, great deal. Not so much right now because the rates have been low and they've been low for a while and most everybody has already refinanced their house. Uh, you know, the other, the other thing is, you know, because of the lack of inventory and because it's been 11 years, the prices have steadily gone up. Everybody's seen their house go up in price. We just talked about that, um, which is great, except if you're looking to buy a house. So, I mean, if your house, if you're looking to sell a house to buy the next house, if you're looking to go up in price, your house you're at right now has gone up substantially in the last, let's say, five years, substantially in the last, like, one year, but, like, substantially, let's say, in the last five years. But you look at the house that you're looking to buy, if it's the next step up, that house is uh, has appreciated even more substantially in the last five years. So you're going to an even higher point. And even if, let's say, there's a lot of people that are shocked when they say, I'm going to sell my house and I'm going to downsize. So they're going to sell their house, they're going to downsize to something that's newer, but smaller, whatever. Some of the newer construction is pretty crazy on price. So they're finding out that they sell their older house, their 20-year-old house, 
um, you know, four bedroom, big house, five bedroom, whatever, and they're gonna get a nice small like three bedroom ranch with an office, this and that that was just built like a couple years ago. Da da da. They find out that, that that house is as much, if not maybe even more than their house that was built 20 years ago. So there's that sticker shock that people are seeing that even though I got money, even though I got equity, the house I'm going to next, they got equity too. And they have high prices too because we have that lack of inventory. So so it's it, it does have the good news, bad news of people staying in their house that long. The good news is equity. And, you know, the bad news is there's less homes on the market. Um, there's less people. There's no less need to move. And that means that there's higher prices if you're looking to buy the next house. So that's kind of the situation. If if this trend continues, you can expect that 10.6, we're looking at it a couple of years from now, it's going to be 11 or 12 years. You know, look at it a couple of years from now. Just because people, there's less reason to move you know, for, for jobs or to be close to things, you know, things like that. Everything's grown up around them. You can work from home. Once you find a house that you like, you can hunker down and be there, you know, forever. I talked, <laughs> talked to one guy one time, I asked him about selling his house. He said, I'm going to have my wake in my living room. So <laughs> there's some people who are like that. They're going to have their wake in their living room. They're not moving. So, you know, so we're dealing with that right now. So what does that mean? So we talked about the why, we talked about the good, the bad. And so what's next? If you're selling your house, wonderful. You're going to make a whole bunch of money on it. The question is, what are you doing next? And that's been the question a lot of people have been asking, what am I doing next? If you're buying, there's more homes on the market now than there were during the height of the pandemic. So you have a little bit more play. Number two, there's, there's fewer buyers in the market. We had a lot of out-of-state buyers coming in during the pandemic because some of those states had crazy lockdown rules like California, New York, uh, Illinois, crazier lockdown rules than we had here in Georgia. People were trying to escape that and come here to Georgia. So for that reason, we had a lot of out-of-state buyers. Not so much right now. So there's fewer, and there's a lot of buyers who they were in the, in the game for a year, year and a half, and they're, they're done. They're just, they're wiped out. That it's mentally fatiguing. It's just, it's hard because then I've worked with buyers who are just, I mean, they just tap out, they're done because you put in enough offers and miss enough houses. And eventually you're done looking. So a lot of buyers have pulled out. So there's fewer buyers in the market right now. There's a few more listings coming back on people, a little more comfortable selling. So that means that we're starting to slowly and very slowly, but it is happening. We're slowly getting more homes on the market. And I think that that's good news. We need to get to more kind of equal market uh, to get things going again. And I think that that's what we need to do to get that number to go from 10.6 and come down. But as it is right now, it's just going to continue to grow because people just aren't moving because there's there's no, <laughs> there's nowhere to go. So if you're selling, you're going to do great. If you're buying, you just need to work with a realtor that has a game plan for how are we going to find your next house? Where are we going to look? How can we find the, the, the off-market properties? How can we find that next hot area that nobody knows about um, because it was like everybody knows about all the hot areas everybody's going to now. So what's going to be the next one? So there are ways around it. We're still going to tap into historically low rates. We're going to find that house. It, it's not going to be easy, but you know, we're pros over here at the Malone Realty Group. We can help you out. So if you want to talk about it, 470-233-4409. Uh, don't know if I solved all the world's problems right there. I, I think that we just peeled away the onion. We threw the onion on the on the table and said, hey, look at the onion. But but I think we talked a little, a little bit about it. So if you have any more questions about what we talked about, 470-233-4409. This is Steve with the Malone Realty Group, EXP Realty. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.